Today I'm going to talk about uh, Prince Charles and the relationship uh, between him and the law. The reason I say the relationship between him and the law is because I see um, many uh, things in the press uh, about his right to be king. This was above all the case uh, in the 1990s where it started to question his right to be king. His, should he be bypassed in favour of his son? Even Diana, in a November 1995 interview given to Panorama, uh, suggested that he, uh, he would find it very difficult being king and that he, he perhaps should uh, uh, be bypassed. She didn't say in so many words, uh, but uh, this was the impression that she was giving. This is the famous uh, interview went to the Queen of People's Hearts. Um, uh, interview. Now, the um, this going back to when all these problems sort of began. The 29th of July, 1981, was a was a particularly wonderful day. I mean, it's in my memory very clearly. It was a Wednesday, and um, we'd all been given the day off work. And the previous night, for example, there had been this wonderful uh, fireworks display in Hyde Park. There had been so many people living there. A friend of mine who lived in Lancaster Gate, which is uh, the street which is, uh, well, Bayswater Road is uh, to the north of, and then uh, behind Bayswater Road there's Lancaster Gate. And he couldn't, he, he couldn't get into the park to see it, so he watched it on the television. Wonderful feeling. There's something which is very British, that there's this incredible sense of solidarity. That everybody, sticks together in times of uh, difficulty and also in times of joy. Um, four years earlier, in 1977, we had the Silver Jubilee of the Queen and many people even today, uh, 30 years later, still have their mugs and, um, and plates and what have you. There have been street parties that have been the uh, most wonderful display. Not only that, in many parts of London you see the thing, a little plaque on the, on, on the ground. Silver Jubilee walkway, the Queen came this way during her Silver Jubilee uh, celebrations. The 29th of July itself, i am give an example of um, the feeling. I, I regret that um, I had actually slept in my own bed that night. Um, um, the, a friend of mine, he went and camped out along the Mall. Uh, just to see them, a fleeting moment that they'd go past in the carriage and he would see them, and you don't do it for the fleeting moment, you do it for the atmosphere, and he set up this wonderful atmosphere of people around him from Australia, from South Africa, and other places. And uh, very early in the morning, he said there was this road sweeper went by, it must be one of these little vehicles that they use to clean the roads, in this, and there was just this road sweeper, the road was completely empty. But he said this huge cheer and amount of applause for this this poor little black guy who was going to do it. And it must have been something wonderful. I mean, uh, he will remember that moment for the rest of his life. And um, there was the, 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 this, this feeling of it. And I remember how I, I walked around, I uh, started off in Hyde Park and feeling the atmosphere everywhere. and. Uh, the, the first place I got to with a view of the couple, a potential view, and that was in uh, it was near Waterloo Bridge. I had to go a very long way, and I remember the people around me. To, and I still remember the people around me, and then the talk with the policeman, who was photographed, of course, I have, and uh, as well as that of the couple, uh, that's, in, that's, that's in London at the moment. So there was this this wonderful feeling. Um, the Sun newspaper, which uh, changed its logo to a sort of a purple colour, so these were red, changed its name to <laughs> the Royal Sun. And on, on the following, on the 30th July, there was nothing in the newspaper except for photographs of the Royal Wedding. Nothing. 32 pages and only photographs, a little bit of text, but of the Royal Wedding. And that shows the level of, to which it had got. And, 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 and the, the newspaper said correctly, interpreted the mood. Um, and it is no wonder that when things go wrong, as inevitably they had to go wrong, um, even Diana herself said on the day 
She felt like she was a lamb going into the slaughter. She had her doubts. She knew it was wrong beforehand. One of her relatives said, well, look, you've got to do it. You know, your face is now printed on the tea towels. But none of the rest of us didn't know about this, of course. And what happened was that it's going to go wrong. So we've got to find something. Somebody's got to be blamed. Somebody's got to be... Uh, it's got to be analysed, and it can't be analysed in the fact that this was a 19 year old innocent uh, girl who's going to marry somebody 13 years older than herself, so in a, in a totally alien environment with totally different interests and total mismatch. And uh, on top of that he was in love with somebody else. The relationship between Charles and Camilla uh, goes back to 1968, um, she's a year older than he is. And why weren't they together then? Well, that was a very good question. It would seem that then he, had, he went off to Australia or something, and then, then, then somehow she got married. And, but they kept up this relationship. Indeed, one of the people who uh, was on his carriage that day um, was the husband of Camilla. This is a tragedy that two people can want to be together for uh, 36 years, yet can't get married. The night or so on. That is a real tragedy. Um, anyway, Camilla didn't fit the bill for a future queen, and Diana did. Now, let's look at these claims which start to appear in the press that Charles should not be king. Right, the choice of the monarch is based on on the law. The law was laid down in 1701, uh, changed in 1711 uh, uh, and again in the 1760s. This was brought about because of problems which happened under Charles's namesakes, Charles I and Charles II. Charles I, who reigned from 1625, to, uh, was executed in 1649 after a civil war which he lost at the age of 49. Um, he um, caused the civil war by his belief in the right, uh, his right to rule and his right to raise taxes. Um, after 11 years as a, as a republic, um, Britain in 1660 became a monarchy again under that of his son, Charles II, who was born in 1630 and he reigned from 1660 to 1685. Charles II was not an autocrat. Um, he did have extra uh, marital affairs. He, in fact, fathered 30 children, none of them with his wife. Uh, he was succeeded by his brother, James II. On his deathbed, Charles admitted that he'd been a Catholic. He didn't say his religion because he didn't want to rock the boat. He was very, very sensible in this time. But James II started to put his own favourites in, uh, his own people, and to such an extent that he caused a revolt. The first revolt was quelled, and the second time round, the, uh, the nobles the, uh, asked the King of Holland, William, if he wouldn't mind coming over and becoming the King of, uh, the King of Britain, and, um, which is precisely what happened. A glorious revolution. Now, it wasn't that glorious because uh, William had to come over from Holland and instead of going the direct route, which would be, I suppose, via Suffolk or Essex, he decided to land somewhere in Somerset and coming around in the broad sweep, uh, uh, taking a very long time to do it. But even James, of course, plenty of time to get away, which may have been the, may have been the aim, not to cause any bloodshed. But anyway, it worked. Now, um, James. Uh, did make uh, a couple of attempts to uh, regain the film. Um, uh, the, the most uh, important one being that he tried to buy, buy Ireland, um, which led to uh, significant bloodshed, which is remembered to today. Um, anyway, so the law was then laid down who could be, who could be king who couldn't. And this is based on religion. Now, tradition rules, it goes to the eldest son. The eldest son becomes the king. Now, there is nothing in the law written that if you uh, treat your wife in a not a very nice way, then, then, then you can't be king. And 
even once again we can go back into history, we can go even further back and we can 